Dispelling the damaging myths holding people back on a daily basis, it was time to offer a different approach to life and to learning. A large number of people are told directly that they're not a math person or an English person or an artist by teachers or parents. In an attempt to be helpful, adults tell young learners that a particular subject is just not for them. This happens to some when they're children. For others, it happens later in life when they're taking college courses or interviewing for their first job. Some people are given negative messages about their potential directly. Others assume it from culturally embedded ideas that some people can achieve and some cannot. When we learn the new science in this book and the six keys of learning I will present, our brains function differently and we change as people. The six keys not only change people's beliefs about their reality, they change their reality. This is because as we begin to realize our potential, we unlock parts of ourselves that had been held back and we start to live without limiting beliefs. We become able to meet the small and large challenges we're faced with in life and turn them into achievements. The implications of the new science are important for everyone. For teachers, leaders and learners, the change possibilities created by this new information are far-reaching. I'm a Stanford professor of education who spent the last few years collaborating with brain scientists, adding their knowledge of neuroscience to my knowledge of education and learning. I regularly share the new knowledge that is in this book and invite people to think differently about problems, and it changes the way they think about themselves. I've spent the last several years focusing on mathematics, the subject with the most damaging ideas held by teachers, students, and parents. The idea that math ability and a host of other capabilities is fixed is a large part of the reason that math anxiety is widespread in the US and the world. Many children grow up thinking that either you can do math or you can't. When they struggle, they assume they can't. And from that point on, any struggle is a further reminder of their perceived inadequacies. This affects millions of people. One study found that 48% of all young adults in a work apprentice program had math anxiety. Other studies have found that about 50% of students taking introductory math courses in college suffer from math anxiety. It's difficult to know how many people walk around in society harboring damaging ideas about their math ability, but I estimate it to be at least half of the population. Researchers now know that when people with math anxiety encounter numbers, a fear centre in the brain is activated, the same fear centre that lights up when people see snakes or spiders. As the fear centre of the brain becomes activated, activity in the problem-solving centres of the brain is diminished. It's no wonder that so many people underachieve in mathematics. As soon as people become anxious about it, their brains are compromised. Anxiety in any subject area has a negative impact on the functioning of the brain. It's critical that we change the messages that are given to learners about their ability and rid education and homes of anxiety-inducing teaching practices. We're not born with fixed abilities, and those who achieve at the highest levels do not do so because of their genetics. The myth that our brains are fixed and that we simply don't have the aptitude for certain topics is not only scientifically inaccurate, it's omnipresent and negatively impacts education and many other events in our everyday lives. When we let go of the idea that our brains are fixed, stop believing that our genetics determine our lives' pathways, and learn that our brains are incredibly adaptable, it's liberating. The knowledge that every time we learn something, our brains change and reorganize comes from perhaps the most important research of this decade, research on brain plasticity, also known as neuroplasticity. I'll be sharing the most compelling evidence on this topic in the next chapter. When I make the point with adults, often teachers and educators, that we should reject ideas of fixed thinking and instead see all learners as capable, these adults invariably tell me about themselves as learners. Almost all of them can recall their own experience and realise the ways in which they themselves were limited and held back. We've all been fully immersed in the damaging myth that some are smart, they have a gift or a special intelligence, and some are not. And these ideas have shaped our lives. We now know that ideas about limits to potential or intelligence are incorrect. Unfortunately, they're persistent.